So we're here on the sidelines of VZ Tough in Austin to catch up with Ken Sanfeld from Solid. So Ken, I know you guys have a, a lot of news at the show and coming up, so I was hoping first maybe you could tell me about the new product that you're showing here in Austin. Well, we're showing a lot of new things that are coming. Um, uh, one of the big things that we're showing at the event is our Alliance uh, Edge ROU, or E-R-O-U, which is a fiber to antenna solution. And it's something we've been working on and continuing to enhance. And um, in fact, I brought one with me today. Yeah, let's do and the, um, you know, obviously the goal is to uh, have a solution that is uh, smaller, uh, less expensive, more Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi-like, something that an enterprise would, uh, wouldn't mind seeing on their ceiling and might be easier to install for integrators and, and folks, right? So it's really meant uh, for projects where they would favor a fiber cable versus a coax cable. And it's kind of a, you know, it's a big trend right now. It also is 5G capable, it is also CBRS capable. So, you know, those are things that are really important to the community right now. Okay, so, you know, I, I'm curious about this enterprise angle. Uh, as 5G perpetuates, we've heard a lot of talk about private networks. Mm -hmm. Is the idea to make the technology a little more enterprise friendly to kind of drive that adoption? Correct, correct, yeah. It's to drive the adoption, hopefully lower costs, um, just make it more friendly um, and give them what they want, right? They're looking for all the services. Uh, they're looking for things like the private network, the CBRS in the U.S., right? It's very important to them. Um, they just want to know that if they install a network that they can adapt and change. And with an active device like this, you can change the network, add to it very easily uh, and cost effectively, right? So that's going to be important for the carriers. It's also going to be very important for the enterprise themselves. And also, um, you know, folks like the third party owners, you know, who are providing to the smaller enterprise and larger enterprise, um, they're looking for solutions that are going to be more cost effective to deploy and enhance. Okay, so while we're on this in-building topic, there's a, a lot of discussion around does millimeter wave make sense as an in-building, uh, you know, signal? And I'm just kind of curious, uh, what you're hearing from your carrier customers, what you're hearing from some of your colleagues in the industry, and how Solid is addressing that whole problem with getting millimeter wave inside. Sure. Um, so we're ultimately going to be addressing it two ways. Um, the first of which is through um, uh, 5G millimeter wave repeaters, which uh, our product line called Rocket Wave is going to address that. Um, and essentially that's a you know, very cost effective way to take the signal from the outside and put it inside. And that's going to be the first way we're going to do that. Um, as far as where you would use that and how cost effective it is for a large venue, uh, you know, that's to be seen. Um, you know, we're trading a lot of new ground here in terms of you know, propagation, uh, how these things actually work in the real world, and we're just going to have to see. The other way we're solving that in the future is going to be through our SURF uh, ORAN solutions, which will also be in the future millimeter wave capable. Essentially, that's a, a network solution and it doesn't really matter which band. But, you know, once again though, um, from a cost-effective standpoint, we're gonna have to see how this works out. You need a lot more units, a lot more nodes like this. Okay, you mentioned Open RAN there. I know Solid joined the ORAN Alliance last year, and there's yes. been a lot of momentum around opening up the, the RAN interfaces, letting operators mix and match hardware and software. We've seen a lot of traction with uh, Telefonica, Voda, and there was an announcement yes. earlier this week from uh, Edisalot. So yes. I'm just kind of curious, what your perspective is on the adoption trajectory of ORAN solutions and what Solid's kind of strategically doing over time to make sure that when the time is right, you're yes. ready to go. Yes. So um, we, we've obviously committed to the, op the Open RAN Alliance standard. So that was the first step, which we did a year ago. Uh, since then, we've been focusing on, uh, in South Korea, working with the operators that are very focused on, on trying it. They have a little different approach in, in how they want to uh, do it. Uh, in the U.S., we're basically learning from the operators you know, what their ideas on the open standard are. Um, we know why they want to do it from a money savings and a vendor standpoint. Um, ultimately, you know, it makes perfect sense for everyone. Um, as far as the, to answer your question specifically on the adoption rate, um, I don't think it's going to be like this year. I mean, I think they're going to continue to research and try and test and lab test and maybe do some trials. Um, how it gets adopted on a big scale is still to be seen. Obviously, what we're ready to do is we're ready to go full bore 
and, and produce hardware and software that will, will, will you know, have a complete solution. Um, you know, we depend also on the software vendors, the CUDU vendors for the software, because we're not a software company on that side of things. Um, and right now, our, our clear partner uh, in doing these solutions is Samsung. And uh, that's, that's really important um, you know, to, to what we're doing is to support their efforts. So you mentioned kind of the general premise around ORAN is this network economic question, and that's particularly important when you think about density and 5G and, and that sort of thing. So in the context of network economics and ORAN, that seems like a home run if you're an operator, but like you said, adoption is not going to be immediate. What do you see as some of the milestones that the industry is collectively going to have to go through uh, before we see wide-scale adoption of ORAN type solutions? Sure. Well, I think they, they have a lot of things to address. Um, the biggest thing will be uh, creating a standard that is easily, um, easily adoptable and easily executed on by the vendors like us, right? So, you know, we, we work, we test hard software and hardware together, and we say, look, it meets the ORAN standard. The real test is you can swap out hardware or software uh, with another vendor, and it works just as well, and there's no glitches. Those are things we just don't know because it hasn't been done that way yet. Um, but that's the goal, right? So um, to me, that's going to be the biggest test of, of how this is going to go together. The other test is um, uh, the capacity. Um, you know, if you're doing an in-building system, you don't need huge capacity unless you're talking about a venue. Um, but if you're doing outdoor macro or you're doing a big venue, capacity is, is, is huge, right? So there hasn't been a proof of how well these VRAN architectures can scale to massive capacity. Theoretically, it's unlimited, right? You just keep adding processing and adding other capabilities to it. But that's where I think, that's where we have to see how it's going to do. And, um, and the only way that's going to happen is when you know, things start deploying, like for example, the stuff that's going on in Japan with Rakuten, um, you know, they're, they're blazing trails for us. In the U.S., I think um, there's a potential where companies like, like DISH might uh, try hardware and software solutions like this before they would go other ways. Um, and I also think in building is a perfect place to try these solutions before you deploy them in your macro network. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, think, I, think, I think the trend is going that direction.